Hey everybody, welcome back to TXGameHunters.com. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to go through all the internal features of the new ATN Excite 2 HD. Uh, I got my TV set up here. Of course, once we hook it up, I'm going to get the camera nice and close so you guys can see it. We're going to hook this up through the HDMI port that's right here on the side, right here. Uh, right next to the external power pack supply, which of course goes in here. And you're going to see on the screen 100% live what's going on through the scope, inside the scope. Now for today's video I have the cap on, so all you're going to see is a black screen uh, behind the menu. So, you know, of course we're not pointing any kind of a targets or anything like that, we're doing this indoors. Um, but you're going to see all the menu features, which is the main uh, main purpose of the day which is a lot, a lot of good things. Uh, there's a few things that I would like to see a slight improvement on, uh, but overall, I definitely rate this scope a very, very good buy. A few things on external, just to touch bases. I know I did another video on it, but we're gonna just touch base in case this is the first video you're seeing. ATNX Site HD2 right here which is awesome. One of my, this is probably the first thing a lot of you guys are noticing. Uh, the focus ring, which is, look how easy that is to turn. Two fingers, turning it without much at all. Now, as we know on the old site, <laughs> the first generation, it was a lot more difficult to turn, especially if you had your IR light hooked up on the side to, to get around that and try to turn that. If you're right-handed, it's, it's definitely a pain. Uh, so this is a huge, huge improvement. Now I can say after field testing it for three days, probably five more than 500 rounds put through with this scope on here. Uh, the focus never moved from recoil. I know that was some questions that some people had: was will the will the spring focus knob versus the big? Um, a lot tighter version would it move with recoil this is a 223 so it doesn't have a ton of recoil but uh, the answer is no in my experience um, still got the same ports right here uh, one thing I'll show you a little bit later the reason why I don't have it hooked up the rubber cap is because we're gonna hook up the HDMI port and with the rubber cap it only has one slot but uh, you can get a rubber cap now that hooks through here and then hooks on to, so it's all one rubber piece, so it's protected when you're out in the field. Um, so, awesome feature. Uh, also up front, if you notice, if you if any of you have uh, the old x let me go ahead and grab one real quick. Alright, so here's the Generation 1 5x12. Uh, if you notice, right here on the 5x12 you have the little set screws all around, which, which there was a fix if those came loose, uh, you would lose your zero, your point of impact would be different. A lot of issues with these, I mean there was fixes for them, but there's a lot of issues with these on the Generation 1. Generation 2, that is not the case. There's none here. Now, you can still get into here by the main set screws here, but there's not a bunch of them around here to help go loose, which is awesome. Uh, and this is that focus ring I was talking about a few minutes ago where you had to, you know, reach your hand around and turn it. It's pain when you have an IR light on here. Uh, another difference is the rear, the rear focus. So watch. It's more of a See, it's a telescopic, comes in and out, versus the same thing on the back, which is also tight, which does not come in and out, just a, a, a adjustable. So, a few improvements that I like. Uh, externally, I don't think there's any improvements that I do not like. Uh, I don't have it, I have it hooked up so you can't see, but on the old, on the Generation 1 version, you would have these screws here, all these set screws here had issues with them. Uh, I have not seen that on the X2. They are, they're a lot, just looking at them, you can tell it's a lot better screws, a lot better hardware used. It no longer has this 
offset piece for your rail. It's just one centered secured piece uh, which is going to make a lot less moving parts which I think the more the less moving parts you have the better. The mounting bracket is is it feels like it's better metal uh, and more secure on the X2 versus the X1. So externally they took a lot of the feedback from the customers on the generation one and really stepped it up on the generation two. So well that's external. I didn't spend a little bit more time than I wanted to on it, but let's go ahead and get to the main reason why we're all here, which is internal features on the menu. So let me go plug in my HDMI cable. All right, and we are back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and power it down so you guys can see and we're going to talk about what just happened there too with that with that feature all right so powering it up and remember the way that the HDMI cable is hooked up this is exactly how you see it when you're looking through the screen HD quality which is awesome all right, so this is pretty much the same, just looks a little bit different. I had the external power pack hooked up. Do you want to use it in power supply mode or USB storage device? Of course, power supply mode. All right, you notice there's a lot of sort of different things already. You have on the left, on the right, moving parts. If I move the scope from side to side, like tilt it in an angle, the left is the left degrees are moving and if I move it pointing up or down the right degrees are moving so you can tell if you're level uh, if you're if you're level left or right or horizontal or vertical which is pretty cool uh, at the top you have where it says northeast and uh, east southeast the compass uh, I know on my old one and it could have been just a setting that it would say more of a degrees versus the actual northeast southeast which I like uh, right off the bat uh, so this is just straight looking through the scope of course I had the cap on because if I didn't we're inside and you would get a lot of interference from it so just a black screen so this is as you're looking through it now zoom feature is still the same front back type if we go to the hit right we're now recording you can see I'm in the upper left hand corner then now there's the counter going hit it again and one good thing here I know uh, like again it's on on my generation one and, and I know a lot of other people had this too if you hit the record button sometimes it wouldn't record sometimes you'd have to hit the inner button in the center once and then hit record and same thing to stop it sometimes you'd have to hit the inner button once and then hit the uh, feature for it to for it to work which could be a pain out in the field this one since I've been field testing it for you know si Thursday Friday Saturday four days now and quite a bit in four days I have not had that happen to me at all uh, left one is still take a picture and Let's see, it's hard to see it with the black screen here, so I'm going to take this off. But when you take a picture now, see at the bottom of the screen? It now shows you a brief, uh, a brief uh, capture of what you just took. So it's just a, shows you that picture, a mini version of it right there. So you, can make, so you know that it took, which is awesome, which I really like. Uh, so that's a cool feature. Alright, now let's get to the guts of it. Uh, hit enter once for menu now. You no longer have to hit enter twice. It's you hit enter once. And you can see here we have a completely different menu setup. So starting going to the left, you have the system settings. And if you look in the top left hand corner of your screen, it tells you what you're on. So system settings, which we'll go there in a few minutes. 
uh, Wi-Fi, and now you can, so this is to turn Wi-Fi on and off easily, so you no longer have to go into the settings and go through the different hoops to get to that. Uh, go up to the recoil activated video, I have it off for right now, and go up to GPS, which I have it off. Now, while we're on the subject of GPS, uh, just like the Generation 1, I experienced issues with the scope not responding when the GPS system was on and searching for signal. I did experience that yesterday. I turned the so we turned the the GPS was off for the last three days. Have had no issues. Yesterday we decided to go ahead and turn it on. Within ten minutes we are in we are under a metal uh, awning. Uh, the scope stopped responding. We powered it down like we have to take the batteries out, put it back in. Went initially and turned the GPS off, and we have not had a problem since. So that looks like it's still an ongoing potential issue on the uh, X2 is the GPS function. Uh, but no issues with Wi-Fi, uh, so which is pretty cool. All right, so next one over, you have environment. Uh, next one over is distance entry. Next one over is the rangefinder, which I know a lot of you are very excited about and finding out a little bit more information, which we will touch on that. And the next one is night mode. So it's easy to go into night mode just like before. Now it's just one click away when before you had to go over, I think, three to, to get into night mode, which isn't extra, but it's just easy to get into. And then exit, which you hit once to get out of. Now let's go back into the menu, and we will st we will go to the right. So we'll hit the settings last since it's the biggest aspect of it. Night mode. Click on it, and boom, you're in night mode. I have it set to green, which it's set to, uh, but we'll change it back to day mode. And day mode. So very easy to do. Next, range finder. Let's go ahead and hit this bad boy. All right, so... Range finding features. All right, let me go back. Oops. All right, so in the right when you first hit enter, it brings you into the range finding feature. Now, if you see the arrow on the top, and then at the bottom it says place arrow over the target, which is at the very top of the target, and press OK, which you would do. It takes that reading now. It says place the arrow under the target and press OK. So you would do that. And now, according to this, we are 4,770 4, feet away from my blinds, which are about two feet in front of me. So it is not a laser like some people may have thought, like a, a typical rangefinder. It's a calculation based system. Now, how does that work? If you look at the bottom right hand corner where it says settings, you hit over. Now we're in the settings. So you have a couple different options here. You have manual entry, deer, brown bear, wild boar, gray wolf. That is pretty much the basic of what they loaded. Um, so, and then you have a manual entry which you can physically type, put in your own height. Now these are the heights of the typical animal. So the typical height of the animal. Um, they have a deer set pre preset to 5.91 feet. Uh, brown bear set to 5.25 feet. And I'm guessing that's when they're on all fours and not standing up. Uh, wild boar 3.61 feet. And gray wolf of 2.95 feet. Now, honestly, I don't agree with the deer. I mean, how many of us know a deer that their back is six feet tall? If that's the case, I want to hunt on your lease all the time. <laughs> because I know the deer that I'm dealing with are not typically six feet tall on their back. Uh, which I could be mistaken, but... Uh, so I don't know if that's 100%. So I guess the next deer that I shoot, I'm going to measure just to make sure, uh, or look online. So or a manual entry. So you can select any one of these. So let's say you're going wild boar hunting, which I think that 3.6 feet 
is pretty accurate. I mean, I think that's a pretty decent size wild boar, but I think that's pretty accurate overall for the top. So let's say we're going hog hunting. I'm going to hit enter on that, and it's going to tell me load or exit. I'm going to load it. So now if you look in the top <coughs> left-hand corner, it's now saying on the right, it says 4,770 feet, and then the top and bottom, and then it says 3.6 feet. So that means 3.6 feet is the setting that we are. So let's go ahead and, and measure here. Uh, you can't see what I'm moving because I have the scope on, but it also takes your settings. Like, for example, remember when I said when you raise the scope or lower it, it changes the degrees? So I think that's what it uses in the calculations. It's going to press enter here. Got it. Lower it down a little bit. Press enter. And now it changed it to 43 feet. So I just I just did a, a rough, you know, guess of just moving it up and down. So that's if if you were to have the top part at the bore and then that bottom part, most likely that bore is 43 feet away. Now I haven't seen to where to change it to yards. It's showing it in feet, but we all know roughly if you divide that by three, you're pretty much at your yardages. So 43 feet is, you know, divided by 3, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 or so yards. Uh, so that's about where you're at on, on the rangefinder. So it is not a, uh, a laser. It's a calculation-based system. So have I gotten it out into the field and fully tested it to see if it's accurate yet? No. Uh, based on other calculation systems, if the main entry is correct, like the actual height of the animal, then the calculations will be correct. So it all depends on that. So, I mean, if you're hunting deer and you have a preset to deer and then a hog walks up and you don't have time to change it, is it going to be accurate? Most likely not. So that's, that's one negative feature I would say about the rangefinder is that, uh, which, I mean, it would be hard to put that that type of technology in there, but uh, that's one thing. So let's go ahead and get out of there, hit the left arrow to exit out, hit enter again. So that was the range finder. Now we're going to go into distance entry. So whatever you just ranged yourself at is your, dis is your distance already, if you can see on the top left hand corner. Now if you have an actual laser rangefinder with you and you and you laser in your feeder and you know your feeder is exactly 92 yards you calculated that to feet you hit the up arrow button as you can see in the left hand side it's going up actually by yards it's going up three three feet at a time oops I hit enter sorry guys so 75, go down, 72, go down, 68, go down. So it's going up in yardage increments. So like for your trip, if you set it at zero feet and you go and you range your feeder and it's 92 yards, you're going to count, I mean it's a pain, but you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 92. And then that's your 92 yard distance. Now, when they have the ballistic calculation mod done and activated for this for the Excite 2, I think this distance entry is going to play a huge role in that. Uh, but if you but if you do use the rangefinder feature and use it accurately, it will automatically put the distance in here. But this is how you put it in manually. All right, so let's get out of that. Next feature: environment. This is where you put all your data information in. You have your relative humidity, wind speed, wind direction, temperature, barometric pressure, and altitude. So, relative humidity, whatever your weather report says it, you can click the right button on that and change that up and down. Hit enter, and then you can change that up and down, left or right, change it to whatever, whatever it is, hit enter, and it sets it. Wind speed, whatever your wind speed is for that day, so whatever, and hit enter. Wind direction, so if the wind's coming out of the north today, that's what you do, or you can change that as well. Now, that's the only thing you can change because this scope automatically detects temperature, it automatically detects your barometric, 
pressure and it automatically uh, detects your altitude. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's 73 degrees in my house, which is about correct. Uh, and it has the barometric pressure and the altitude. So it automatically detects that and loads it in. So that is the environment feature. And anytime you want to get out of a menu, go all the way up and hit the left arrow key or enter at the top. So now we are back. That was environment. Now we're at the Wi-Fi, which we didn't, and we turned all of those off. That's if we wanted to turn on the recoil activated video. You cannot change the settings to the RAV here, but you can turn it on and off. All right, so now settings, which is the heart of the beast. First one over, night vision. Hit color, enter, up and down, white or green. Same thing as before. Light sensitivity, same thing. Medium, low, high. Uh, I keep it on medium. I haven't tested the others two, which I will, but not as of yet. Next, photo video. Photo mode, you either have single photo, burst, or time lapsed. Single. Now, if you have it on burst, you can ch actually change the burst count, how many bursts of photos it will take is pretty neat especially like if you're sitting there and let's say you have it on let's say how high it will go 10 is the highest so let's say you have it on 10 and then we have this on burst at the top and the deer's walking by and then all of a sudden he's about to take off and you hit the burst you time it right and you hit the burst and it takes 10 bursts you'll have like a little mini 10 picture moving you know of the deer which which would be pretty cool um, so that's, and then now time lapse settings. So if you have it set on time lapse, you can go and choose how many total photos you take and the seconds apart that you want them. So you can go, the three is the lowest, and 15 is the highest. So 15 seconds in between each photo if you want to set the time lapse. All right, enter, and let's get out of time lapse. Next, microphone, same thing, on or off. On, I like it, because it always records. And video recording, which is the same. Now, the Generation 1 still recorded and full 1080p and 720p HD. The, the difference here on the Generation 2 is that your display is now 720p HD. All right, so recoil activated video. This is where you go into the settings for that. Uh, you can set it to before shot, 20, all the way to 30 seconds. And after the shot, you can set it all the way to infinity, which means until you hit stop, which is pretty cool, I guess. But 30 seconds, I think 30 seconds is good after a shot. Uh, so that's where I'm going to set it for me. Uh, format SD card, if you wanted to form it. Do you want to perform format the SD card? I'm going to hit no because I don't want to wipe everything off of it. No. All right, so it takes me back into here. So that is the photo video. Now let's go over to the display. Screen brightness, which it's not going to change on here because it's hooked up to the TV, but you can go from 1 to 5, which is the same as before, which is especially good for night vision. Display widgets, you get minimal, extended are the two. And I'm not 100% sure what that controls. I wonder if that is the zoom, the extended display zoom. Not sure. I will find out for you guys though. It was on extended, so I'm going to put it back. So sleep mode, you can then put off or on. I'm going to change it to on and go to when I'm hunting I usually like five minutes but you can change it to whatever you like remember if you do if you have the external power pack hooked in sleep hibernation mode does not work uh, it does not go to sleep with your external power pack now after sleep mode which we just set up we go to 
reticle style, which is another one of my favorite new features of the new X2. So click enter there. You have shape and color. Let's go ahead and go to shape first. As you can see, we have a couple different options here. There's seven new seven reticles. We're all used to these. Uh, here's a bigger one, which is a mill dot related bigger one. I would be a fan of this one if it was like on a shotgun, but as we know, it's rated to a 308. I don't know if it could handle the recoil. It's not recommended, so I wouldn't recommend using it. It's more about your own risk at that point. Uh, but I think that would be cool for a shotgun if it could be. Um, especially, you know, if you had the 4x12 and you had a base magnification and like turkey hunting or something like that, that would be a pretty cool one. As well as the this one right here uh, would be a cool cool shotgun type one. This one would also be a nice, uh, I think could be a good rifle scope one as well. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of this one right here for everyday, all the time use. And then, of course, a lot of people were excited about the crossbow reticle. Um, for their crossbows. This is a, this one right here is one that I'm excited about and so you can get it on big right here. So for more long distance shooting I know I mean when I, I have my, my 223 zeroed in right now at a half an inch high at a, at a hundred and, it sh and with that it shoots an inch low at 200. So an inch low at 200 is definitely still a kill and I'm good with that but I can always aim an inch higher now that bottom that first dot on the bottom with it zoomed all the way in hundred will that be an inch I don't know I haven't tested it out yet but as you zoom this in the reticle does not change so if you're zoomed all the way out at base magnification that first dot is going to be a lot further down than if you're zoomed all the way in at 20x or into the extended zoom uh, it's going to be a lot less increments there. So keep that in mind when you're sighting this in. If you use this and sight this in for longer distances, keep that in mind. Uh, so let's go back to settings, back to display, uh, go back down to reticle style, and back to shape. So let me go back. So this is the one I like just because it has the crosshairs and then it has the mill dot so you can actually see in the middle. This one's good, but if you're shooting a smaller, not necessarily smaller target, but let's say rabbit hunting, which is you know, a smaller target at 100 yards, and you are like to shoot at base magnification, that's so bold it's going to get in the way. Uh, this one is more, it has a space in the middle and it's got a mill dot, and, or this one which completely clears up the top crosshair and it's the same aspect. Uh, personally, I like this one, so I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Now, color. I have it on green. I really like green uh, for daytime and nighttime use. Green on green, uh, but you have a different. You have red. You have orange. You have yellow, or hit, or turn off your scope. Or did I move my wire? Sorry, my wire technical difficulty. I unplugged my HDMI cable. All right, so back to uh, color. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, gray, and black. I'm not a big fan of the gray and black. Uh, black could probably potentially be good on the green night vision, but I have not used it. Uh, I like green all around, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with green. So that is the reticle style and colors in a nutshell. All right, profiles. Really, really cool. Really good stuff. This is probably one of my favorite features. Uh, and the reason being is, for example, let's go ahead and click, click on current, which is the first one there. Uh, drag function, you have ballistic uh, coefficient, so you hit enter on that, which you can change that as well. Bullet weight, which 
Mine is actually, the bullet weights that I'm using are 62 grains. And this is, this is not sh doing any kind of calculations of the reticle as of right now. That feature is locked out. This is just straight information about this profile for this zero. Uh, I don't know what the feet per second's uh, initial velocity out of my uh, rifle is at this time. I'd have to look. And the actual zero, what you have your rifle zeroed in for. So whether it's 100 yards, if you zeroed in for 50 yards, whatever. Uh, straight height, it's a straight height from the base to the center of the scope, uh, which I haven't measured. So, a bunch of different options here. Uh, and then you have the zeroing feature, which we will go into um, before. So, that's hit the left arrow button to get back to here, go down and hit other. This is my favorite part. Uh, All right, so when you get your scope, you're going to have one profile, and that's, that's your current profile. Now you can go to create new profile. Uh, which is showing profile three, but I just let me go and delete that. Okay, I went and copied it, so let me delete that. I was playing around with it yesterday. So you're going to have this when you first come on. You're going to have your current profile and your create new profile. So I'm going to hit create new profile, which it did. Now I go down to profile two that I just created. You can either hit load, copy, or delete. Now if you load it, you just loaded it, and now your zero is whatever... So if I hit current and load, now that's your current profile. So whatever you set on that profile is now what your scope is. So I'm going to go back to here because that's what I have zeroed in. <laughs> uh, so just don't accidentally delete your right one before you're done. All right, so if you have multiple rifles and you can create up to six profiles, uh, you can zero in potentially six rifles on this scope all having their own profile and so instead of writing all the different X and Y coordinates down on a piece of paper or in your cell phone or taking a picture of them and putting them in your cell phone or however you do it you have them saved on the scope so as long as you know you you mount it under the same brackets each time on that rifle you can switch it back and forth to different rifles and not have to re-zero in your weapon which is fantastic now, when I was talking about this at our event that we just did our demo event and had a bunch of uh, members come out there, one person had a fantastic idea. He came out and said, hey, you can also set up different profiles for different ammunition, which is fantastic. Especially like I know my 223, I shoot 55 grain basically cheap rounds at the range just to have fun. But when I'm hunt, hog hunting, I use 62 grain or even up to 70 grain for hogs, uh, which we know have a different point of impact. So you can potentially zero in each ammunition on your same rifle and shoot six different grains and always have a zero set up for each grain. So this feature I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this profile too we just created. We're under current... So now we're going to go into the zero ret reticle. Uh, a few different things on here which I'm a fan of. So let's just same thing as before. You make your shots, then you keep your you aim at the bullseye, make your shots. Then when you go to zero it in, you use the arrow keys to change your point of impact cursor while you're keeping the white one on the bullseye that you aimed at. Wherever your bullet is, you then hit enter, which I'm not going to do that because I don't want to change my, my point of impact. And then you hit enter. Now, instead of just exiting you out of the screen like on the Generation 1, it gives you a couple options here. Let's say you, move, you have your 
stuff zoomed in and it wasn't right, you can hit discard changes, it brings you back to the screen. Uh, I hit enter again. You can hit, either hit save and exit or go back to the previous screen. And what I like is zoom. So now, let's say we just zeroed in at base magnification. Now, instead of exiting all the way out, zooming in, shooting, then going back to the menu, then going back to the zero feature, and then getting there, all, now all we have to do is zoom in like we want to, and then make some shots, and now all you have to do is hit enter, and you're automatically back into this setting. And then you can fine tune, which is awesome. So let's say we just fine tuned it, hit enter, and now is where you hit save and exit and we're back here. So you don't have to bounce in and out of this feature several times and navigate back to it to, to keep zero in your rifle to make fine adjustments. Uh, so that's a really cool zero feature that I like. Alright, so now we're at settings. Hit in. So you have for units you have standard or metric which is meters or yards or slash feet keep it on standard. Date and time, you can now go to clock sources manual or Wi-Fi. So if you connect to Wi-Fi on your phone, it'll pull the time off of there. Uh, but we're, I'm going to hit manual because I'm not always connected to the Wi-Fi. Date format, you can do to month, month, day, day, year, year. Or you can change it to day, day, month, month, year, year. I actually like the day, month, year better. Clock format, 12 hours, or you can have it military time, 24 hours. I'm lazy, so I like 12 hours. And then now is where you go in and adjust the dates. Okay, quick bug that I found here right when I pulled my scope out of the box. When I went into here and I pressed the up or down arrow to change a date, the screen actually went dark, and not the scope. The scope did not turn up, but the turn off but the screen went dark and the screen turned off for about 20 seconds and then it came back on and then I was able to change it one more time and then it went back off for 20 seconds and so on and so forth I was very frustrated uh, I got a hold of some technical support they informed me that a very very small amount of units off the production line uh, was not a factory reset was not done uh, after the firmware was installed and so that is a potential bug of that apparently I have one of those units so I did a factory reset and it resolved the issue and I haven't had another issue of that since uh, same thing with the time you can go down there and change the time and then your oops sorry I hit the wrong button And then you can change your time zone to whatever it is, uh, B9, minus 10, 11, I'm sorry, 8. Uh, I have no idea what that is. I had it on minus 8, so I'm going to keep it there. All right, so that's the date and time Wi-Fi. Now here's where you can, it, and it does not let you change anything, but that's your Wi-Fi information. The SSID is now Excite underscore 5 e 8 It's no longer... ATN underscore Obsidian, and then the password is uh, still the same. On the Generation 1, the password and SSID were both the same. That is not the case here. I'm guessing that's so if you have a Generation 1, you can then choose between two without guessing which one is which. Uh, record geotagging, on or off. Since I have GPS... Uh, it's been on this hotel whole time, but GPN has been off as well. But since I have GPS off, I'm going to turn that off. Device type. You can change it to whatever your device type is, which I'm doing here. Zoom. Here's where you can do this zoom, and you can do extended zoom. So this whole thing has been regular. I haven't played with the extended zoom at all, which I'm going to play with that now to see how it is. And here's your restore factory settings, which I'm not going to do. 
And if you look at the very bottom, it tells you what your firmware version is. The firmware version on the ATN Excite 2 HD is 2.1.01.517.en. So that is this scope it's nuts and bolts on the internal uh, menu. Lastly, to sh since we're going to go ahead and end this here in a second, um, let's talk about shutting down the scope. Um, a favorite feature of mine shutting down the scope is you no longer have to press the power button and get that countdown screen and then guess to time it right to let your finger off the power button. Because we all know with the generation one, if you don't time it right and your finger comes off the power button too late, it's going to think you're wanting to power back on and it turns it off and then turns it back on without you pressing anything. And then it sits there in your case and drains the batteries down that you have internally. You go out to the stand next day, forget to bring extra batteries and you have no power. Uh, so quite annoying. They have fixed that with the generation two. You now press and hold the power button. Now shut down the device. Yes or no, it's as simple as that. Go to yes, it shuts down, no, it does not. Awesome feature. Uh, overall, I am super excited about this scope. Uh, and if I had to have any, I guess, complaints, it would be the initial out of the box experience that I did have, but I know that's gonna be a rare experience. However, the customer support at ATN was fantastic, and the ATN Excite group on Facebook is fantastic. To If you're not a member of that, please join, uh, as well as if you're in Texas, the ATN Excite Owners Texas group, please join those. Great technical support help on both of those. Also, the ATN Forum, uh, which, is, which is also a great resource. Um, that's how I was able to fix that issue. So that, that was one issue that I have. Another one is the GPS is not corrected yet. Um, it still freezes the scope if your GPS is on. And a good thing is that we did connect it to Wi-Fi and hit record and it was recording at the same time. So it looks like you can do both of those now which is really cool. I really like that. Uh, one other issue that I did have, which I thought was a pretty major issue at first, <coughs> was I was night hunting the other night and to test it out in night mode, and after about four hours of hunting, my screen shut off. Like, just completely shut off, and I couldn't get it to respond uh, for good. And the scope was still powered on. I had to take the batteries out to get it to shut off, uh, and it was the screen was black. I turned it back on. The ATN power-up screen came on, and then right after that, as soon as I saw the reticle come on, when it tried to click into night vision mode, the whole screen shut off again. I actually did a manual power down again with the batteries, uh, let it cool off. Not necessarily cool off. I didn't know it was cooling off at the time. I let it stay off for about 10 minutes and turned it back on. And then it came back on and was working fine, but about 10 minutes later it shut off again. So I got frustrated and ended for the night. Once again, I got with the admins of the ATM Facebook group, and he directed me through uh, some steps. On We did another factory reset, and it seemed to have fixed it. Uh, but then he did some more research and come to find out that the processor was actually getting really hot. I had it on external power, so it was 100% on all the time. And that extended use with night vision heated up the processor and then it overheated and sort of shut down the screen. So, I don't know if that's going to be a fix coming up soon in a new firmware update or what, but as of right now, when in night vision, it's been recommended to me to use internal batteries on with with the uh, hibernation mode active. Uh, in the past, on the generation one, when I've done that, I can get an eight-hour hunt out of one set of batteries, or you can use the Kentley batteries, which 
uh, get you a quite a bit good amount and they're rechargeable if you don't want to spend money on internal batteries uh, so I did I went ahead and put internal batteries in it last night and let it sit overnight uh, on sleep mode and when I came back in the morning I only slept for about six hours uh, and opened it up and, and picked up the scope it was in sleep mode it came out of sleep mode and was still in night vision without a problem so it seems like that is correct and that did resolve that issue uh, it is a little bit disappointing that I can't have it on external power versus night, on night vision and have it on all the time uh, just because I'm not a big fan of because I don't have the rechargeable lithiums already uh, but it's a minor issue to me and I, I, I I'm very confident that it will get resolved in the future. Okay, so those were the issues that I found with it, but definitely the positive blows away any issues that I did find. Uh, overall, I highly recommend this product, and I really think that this is a revol revolutionary scope and um, definitely something you should get. If you're looking at getting one, uh, on our website we do have the pre-sales going right now. Uh, we don't have an exact ship date when they're shipping out to to uh, dealers like myself. However, because there's no estimated time, I'm guessing three to four weeks ish. So probably the end of the end of March uh, is when they'll start shipping out. So if you pre-order now, you'll probably have it by the end of March, early April ish. Uh, but that's just speculation at this point. But because there's sort of a wait, what I'm going to do for all pre-orders, I'm going to give free shipping and I'm going to give you a, one of our versions of the stock holder slash battery, uh, battery pack holder. So the stock cover slash battery pack holder. So you can have, uh, and it's got, a, it's got a 10 round ammunition uh, holder on the outside of it so you can put extra rounds in it. It has a pouch in it to put... Uh, extra supplies like I put my SD cards in there I put extra batteries in there and then the external power point power pack actually goes in between the stock and the outside of the pouch so it goes underneath it and it's velcro it's really cool uh, so that will come to you free and we will ship that out ASAP as soon as the pre-order is placed so you don't have to wait for that so if you have another rifle or your generation one that you want to use it on until your generation two comes in you'll have all that so, alright, so you guys aren't just staring at a black screen all day. We'll go ahead and end it there. If you have any comments, please go ahead and post it below and subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming up. Once again, thank you for joining us. TXGameHunters.com